Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Human Punishments Expansion Project Hellgate. We'll be talking about that game and a little bit about the beginning, the new Kickstarter campaign game based on uh, this game here. It's a larger variation with some unique twists and turns to it, which you can go ahead and take a look down below, as well as, of course, this game here, which is a team-based game. Uh, it's going to be hidden identities slash hidden roles and hidden teams. Uh, you're going to be getting a certain loyalty card and uh, loyalty cards and a character card at the beginning, which will determine what faction you're on. You could be the machines against the humans, humans against the machines. You could be the outlaw, which is kind of all by themselves, or you could be playing as the was it legion and the fallen those are character classes that are basically trying to convert the other people in the table and defeat everybody who's not on their specific team uh, the games will be ranging based on the number of players this game plays i think four to 16 players it takes about an hour to play and is for ages 13 and up it reminds me of the game good cop bad cop in which you're going to be playing in that game as cops and as the outlaws or the bad cops or whatever i should say um and the fact that you're gonna get loyalty cards so you might start off as a machine character but your loyalty is changed throughout the game on your turn you need to take an action whether it be to draw a program card and utilize it or save it you can go ahead and look at somebody's loyalty card to determine what team they're on or you can pick up a weapon and aim it at somebody if you already have a weapon however you could choose to re-aim that weapon you could choose to shoot that weapon or you could choose to drop that weapon and your objective is to reveal all the loyalty cards of the players that are not on your team eventually revealing their id and then when you hit that player they'll take a damage uh, eventually to the point where they are going to re be removed from the game. When somebody gets removed, they'll check to see if any in conditions are met by everybody closing their eyes. Is any machines left? Is any humans left? Okay. If there is a certain variation of one player winning, like for instance, all the machines are gone, then the humans will win and vice versa for every other class as well. Uh, with this expansion, however, Project Hellgate, it brings some unique new twists to the game, such as the Hellgate and of course the X Automata boss. Basically what's going to happen is as you drop program cards, you're going to get these gate cards. And when they flip over, they're based on the number of required uh, gates that pop out. When that number is reached, whatever number that card is, will be the boss that comes out. And you'll have to deal with it in some way. These can typically help certain teams or hinder certain teams or kind of hurt the table. And you have to work cooperatively, regardless of what you are, to defeat the boss. Uh, just obviously depending because there's so many different types of them and then of course you have the hellgate which is a unique weapon uh, most of the base game is going to have different weapons like pistols and rifles and companions uh, however with new stuff like lasers and rocket launchers and of course the hellgate as well there's a ton of new classes in the expansion there's a ton of new uh, cards that you can utilize for programs and of course identities that you'll be using as well we'll get into all that down below i'll show you what the game comes with basically how to set it up and how it plays very lightly because you've probably already seen my previous video and if you haven't I'll have a link down below and then we'll discuss what I think about this game and we'll talk a little bit about the new game The Beginning uh, by Godot Games. So what we're going to do here is discuss all the things that come in the game Human Punishment as well as Project Hellgate and I'll discuss the different types of cards here. I'll show the setup, explain how it's played, and then we'll come up and review it real quick. Now in this game here, uh, there is some additional stuff that I have. There's a little promo power-up package here, which is going to come with a lot of these cardboard pieces. Uh, and if you do not choose to pick that up, they will still have the cards available for this. So there will be a Hellgate card and the Automata boss cards that you can utilize if you didn't pick this up. But I do recommend this. It is nicer in the game. So the first thing you'll notice here is probably the weapons here. These are all the weapons in the game. You'll be picking them up choosing a player and pointing at them, and then on the next turn you'll be firing, if you can, and uh, doing some damage, hopefully, or revealing their cards. If they have no cards to reveal, they'll take damage. When they have no health left, they're removed from the game. You have these two cards here, which will determine what type of actions you're taking, whether you're an active player or an active armed player. There's three actions for either, and you can choose between those three based on what you are. There's these cards from Project Hellgate, which is going to be the Exodus EX cards, and you're going to have the Legion EX cards. These are all gods that you're going to be utilizing these cards with. Also, of course, they're going to have health. Uh, these over here are boss cards, which are separate from the automata bosses. These will actually turn players into more powerful versions of their specific character ID. Uh, you have the Hellgate, which is a new weapon. And of course, this standing here is going to reference the gods because the gods in this game are actually double-sided. So if you're going to be playing against Omega, 
you'll have both of these here, which will tell you what it takes to defeat that boss specifically and the general information for that boss. And all the cards are double cards that you'll be kind of stacking together. You'll set these aside though in the base game, which I'll explain in a second here. You're also gonna have these things here. These are loyalty cards. And depending on the number of players you're gonna be playing with, so here, this is the, the Hellgate. Uh, depending on the number of uh, players you're gonna be playing with, will determine how many and what of these you're going to be utilizing because majority wins in this game as far as team making decisions. If you happen to have, uh, let's see here, if, you if your character ID was human, but you had these two loyalty cards, you would in fact be machine because you have more machine, two plus one is three, uh, which is greater than one. So you would actually turn to machine and that's how these kind of all work. Just like the game, good cop, bad cop, if you've ever heard of it. Uh, then you're gonna have IDs. Now this is both the base game and the expansion game along with some Kickstarter exclusive ones. Think of the game Werewolf or the game The Resistance. You'll note that those games and this one here have unique characters uh, with also the unique types that they are. So whether you're playing as the outlaws here or you're playing as the humans that are going to be blue or you're playing as the uh, machines which are going to have a red symbol on them. They all basically have the same health of course with some unique ones uh, differing as well as a unique ability whenever they they are revealed typically this is something that's going to happen so they'll start off face down you'll flip it over and do their ability and there's so many different ids in the game you have the rule book for the base game and for the expansion and then of course the most used cards in the game the program cards a lot of these are basically action cards that you can play on your turn as a free action that you can initiate uh, that some of them are also going to be loyalty cards like secret loyalty cards that will count as these guys here that you have to hold permanently uh, but most of them are cards you're going to simply play Play. And then, of course, for the expansion project Hellgate, you're going to have these portals here. When you draw them, you, you ignore them, you set them aside. And based on the number of players, when you draw that specific number, uh, you're going to go ahead and get rid of these guys, and then you're going to reveal that boss. So, for instance, if you're playing, I don't know, a five player game and you needed three portals in the deck, and or three portals needed to be drawn, when the third portal is drawn and it's number six, you'll look through the boss automata deck, and that is the boss you're going to put out onto the field, which in this case for six is actually going to be the Legion boss and you go ahead and put this out and it kind of interacts as a unique player in the game and that's basically how these guys work. You'll draw one and you can choose to play them. You have a certain number that you can hold and play. And then uh, all this extra stuff over here is from the power up pack as well. It's like life points and whatnot that you can choose to use or not use. But for the most part, that's pretty much what you get in the game. A ton of different IDs, ton of different loyalty cards, all the different weapons, and of course the bosses for the expansion. And just like movie magic, we have set up the game for four players. Now, based on the rules and the different type of scenario that you're playing, will determine the setup, the number of characters that you can choose from, and of course you can kind of make your own. And the back of the rule books typically will tell you the different types of variants you can play based on six and seven and eight players and so on and so forth. And of course the basic idea and rules of the game. You can include or remove cards. So if you want to play with the automaton boss, you're going to include portal cards. If you want to play with the human bosses, you can include boss cards that will give you unique twists and turns from your IDs, turning into you into amazing little bosses for your IDs here. Uh, but it, just the basic idea is pretty simple. You will start off with a certain number of weapons and a certain number of locked weapons. You're also going to have the different player active and um, armed active cards that will be given based on what you are playing as. And then you have the boss here with or without his health, depending on what type of boss you get in the game. Everybody is going to get an ID card and they're also going to be getting two loyalty cards each uh, based on the setup, and they're also going to get a program card. And then you're going to choose a player to begin the game. So if this player started, he would be an active unarmed character, so he'll start with this here. He knows he has three options. Option one, to draw one of these cards. Option two, to look at somebody's random loyalty. And option three, they can go ahead and equip a weapon, and they can equip that weapon, and they're going to go ahead and point it at one of the players in the game, in which case on their next turn, they're going to be an active armed player. And if this player wanted to take one of these items here, uh, he can go ahead and play them. He can only have a maximum, I believe, of two at any point in time, regardless of whether they're permanent or not. And some of them are going to be loyalty cards, which will remain in your hand. There's variants to where you can always discard one so that you can keep going throughout the game. But in general, these things will kind of lock you in, meaning that they're going to count towards your loyalty and uh, determine what team you're on throughout the game. And the next player is just going to take a turn now. After he drew his card, this player over here is going to be the new active player. Maybe this player 
player wants to take the rifle and point it at that player over there. This player is then going to take their turn. They're going to go ahead and investigate. Okay, this guy's got a machine, and so on and so forth. And the way it works is eventually come back to this player's turn here, and they can go ahead and shoot that player. And based on what it says, it'll have to. Uh, this player will have to either reveal an ID or multiple IDs or take a certain number of damage. In which case, he can go ahead and reveal an ID, and then this weapon is going to drop. And when you've revealed all your uh, your loyalty cards, then you're going to have to reveal your ID card. Usually when you reveal an ID card, something unique will happen or have a permanent effect. If you then have to take damage, but you have nothing else to reveal, or you're just forced to take damage, you'll turn your character to the side, indicating they've taken a damage. If they take that second damage, they're removed from the game. Of course, there are different variants, but for the most part, removed from the game. Um, but the unique twist about the, this game here is when a character dies, they're kind of in control of when the game ends, and they're going to ask people, okay, who here is left is a machine? Who here left is a human? Is there any Legion players? How many players are Legion, etc., etc.? And based on the different game variants will determine uh, if some if some side has won. You look in the rule book and it'll explain how the roles work. It'll tell you that if you're a machine, um, you need to kill all the humans. So it has it right here. If all the machines and outlaws are eliminated, the humans win. If the humans are eliminated, the machines win. Outlaws have to be the last remaining. And then Legion and Fallen have to be the only uh, ones left in their specific class. And so players also can come back into the game. There's certain unique characters or IDs that will allow them to re return players back to the game. This one here says that when you're revealed, you may now drop your weapon and equip a laser. And permanently, as an active, they can equip a laser, which is really, really nice. As long as that player isn't, of course, dead. Um, and that's the idea of the game. As soon as a victory condition is announced, the game will end. There's a couple unique little twists, too, with, especially with the expansion. I want to talk about that a little bit. When a boss pops out, so eventually you're going to draw into those portal cards, like I was explaining. And on the specific number, so for instance, if the number was three, and this was the third one that popped out, then you're going to go ahead and check that number, which is six. You're going to go ahead and reveal that boss, and you're going to play with that boss as though he was a player in the game. You'd remove the rest of the bosses because you're not going to have any more than one boss in a game and do what it says. Some of bosses have health, some of them do not. Some you can point a gun at, others you cannot, but it really just depends. But generally speaking, as it goes around the table, when it comes back to this player over here, or the boss player, I should say, they have a general rule as to what they do and how they associate or affect the game in a unique way. And uh, sometimes it's beneficial and other times it's not. And sometimes players have to work against that specific boss. Uh, but regardless, it's going to be um, apparent that this is the boss that you'll be dealing with. And if any more portal cards are drawn, they're just discarded. And whenever you do draw a portal card, you'll just draw a new one, regardless of whether it's one from uh, the requirement or one that is past due, meaning a boss is already currently out or was currently out in the game. And that is the game Human Punishment, along with, of course, Project Hellgate. Project Hellgate comes with a ton of new IDs and loyalties and unique different types of cards here, as well as the Hellgate, and of course the Legion God, or I should say just all the Automata bosses. Let's come up and talk about the game, and then I'll talk a little bit about the, be the beginning, whether you want to pick it up on Kickstarter or not. Most modern gamers understand what a trader-based or team-based trader game is. However, for those of you who don't, this game focuses around trying to get your team to achieve victory without having any information other than what you currently have at the beginning of the game, which is about yourself. And you'll need to utilize the actions and cards in the game to determine what everybody else is. You don't want to just simply wily attack anybody that you see. You have to kind of deduce what they are based on the knowledge you have without giving too much away to everybody else. Because if you out one of your own teammates, then the other players are going to try to destroy them, and it was all on your own doing. So you have to kind of be sneaky as to how you do it. Also, your different IDs in the game will determine what you're trying to accomplish and how well your character works with certain abilities. Some IDs will change the way an ability works or give you another active action, and others are going to simply be strong powerhouses or healers. They can resurrect players and all kinds of interesting things in this game. If you like games like Resistance and Good Cop, Bad Cop, this is going to be just like those games but it's going to be a little bit more complex in meaning that there's a ton of more things that are involved. Uh, if you like the different types of uh, factions in the resistance, right? There's generally, I think that the most you can get with all the expansions is like 20. This one here has at least quadruple that. There's a ton of different IDs with all the different classes, the mind eater, the AIT, Al Watson. And then you've got the humans like the lifesaver and the waitress and the agent and the underground cop. Do you want to play as the machines, whether you be firewall, nemesis, a mercenary or ID? Um, 
and of course they have some unique little twists and turns as well in here. There's a good chunk of different IDs and how they function will be based on when they're revealed and what they do. Uh, the different types of programs are also interesting as well. There's programs that are permanent that will give you lasting effects or useful abilities. There's programs that will give you changes to your loyalty, and there's programs that will let you gain bonus actions or take additional actions or give somebody some type of loss or uh, disservice to them. Another thing to note is the most important thing is since we're talking about the expansion is that you're going to have the Hell Hellgate. Yeah. And you're going to also have the boss, right? The Hellgate allows you to choose two players that are next to each other, and each of them has to reveal their ID or take two damage, and then you drop this. And this is basically a weapon. It's a very, very powerful weapon. It's very useful, but you have to unlock it in most cases, and it's very challenging to do so. And of course, players are not going to like you if you do that, and if you out one of your own teammates with that, it's going to be very uh, non-beneficial for you and your team. Uh, the bosses are really interesting as well. Uh, utilizing these guys here, which is nice on this side, it tells you how many different EX cards are required for portal cards in order to go ahead and uh, get the bosses out and the number of players associated. Then you have the boss that pops out. All the bosses function differently. Some of them will help certain teams. Like for instance, there's the Legion God. This is one that we played with. Um, basically it can die. You can reduce its health to zero. And uh, when that happens, all Legion players have to let you know that they've become, that they were Legion. And when this boss pops out, everybody has an opportunity to become a Legion. Basically cards will get shuffled and dealt out to players to choose and look at. And if you happen to draw the Legion card, you turn into a Legion. So your objective will be to keep your God alive as long as possible without having to out yourself. Uh, there's a super scary uh, gods like Omega. Uh, he can't be defeated and he draws and reveals a program card on their turn. And, uh, Every time he does, um, a pistol is fired, and it's it can get rather nasty. And Omega itself can win. And there's a ton of these cards in here. They're double cards, so they actually put them together, and they form a beautiful piece of artwork. The artwork in this game is simply magnificent and really, really great. I I, I cannot preach enough about this being my favorite deduction games artwork, team-based deduction games artwork. I am simply enamored with it. It's got like a steampunk sci-fi type of feel. It's dark and it's very gritty. And of course the complexity of this game is is extreme. There's a ton of different choices and things you can do and utilize in the game. The weapons are all unique and they can help you or hurt you or benefit your allies. And so if you're looking for a trader-based game or a team trader-based game that has a lot of choices, a lot of options, a ton of replayability with a bunch of unique interesting things, this is one I would su definitely suggest picking up. It's one of my favorites and it has a ton of choices now that being said it's going to be a little more complex than the game like resistance or good cop bad cop and the fact that there's just a ton of stuff going on and you're going to probably mix and match things you're going to remove certain things you don't want to utilize whether it be the player bosses or maybe you don't want to play with the automata bosses or certain different uh, classes or ids you might find to be a little more strong than others or or based on the scenario you might say oh this is not one that's going we're going to utilize so you'll have to do that and deduce that as you play throughout the game um and you're not going to realize it. So some games are going to be like instant. So they're going to instantly be over. It'll be like a couple rounds and the game instantly is done. Other games where you have a bunch of healers or resers can go on in perpetuum. They can go on a, a long, long time, which can get tedious as well. So those are probably the main drawbacks of the game is the length can be affected in a numerous amount of ways. It can be over really quickly or it can be a long drawn out process, even though you know that one team is very, very likely to win, which is still fun for the team that's winning, I suppose. Uh, so overall, this game game is brilliant. I, I've already reviewed it previously with the, the prototype of the original game, um, and Project Hellgate doesn't know, doesn't do any disservices to the game. It just provides more stuff, and you can choose to utilize it, but not just more of the same unique twists and turns, mainly in the form of the Hellgate and the bosses that come out, and how you choose to utilize them, and if you would like to utilize them. I personally do enjoy them, and I'm going to keep them in the game whenever I choose to play <laughs> Human Punishment. There's also a Kickstarter out currently called The Beginning, which is basically the prequel series to what's going on here in which the humans and the machines are kind of going at it. And you're basically encoding a firewall um, the humans are trying to like secure a firewall while the machines are trying to put viruses in and legions are doing their own thing messing with the crime in the city. It's basically going to be a more deep thinking game that's associated with games like Battlestar Galactica or, or, or Deep Dead Moon or whatever you want to call it or Shadows over Camelot. It's a larger version, a variant of this game. It still applies with the fact that you can change classes and whatnot. So imagine this game being uh, enlarged, utilizing a board, utilizing character standees, 
he's moving around and trying to accomplish different goals based on the different areas that you can go on. It's available on Kickstarter. I think it's going to be there for another six days based on the remaking of this video, or the, the I should say the putting out of this video. You'll be able to check that out if you're interested. And if not, if you want something a little more lighter, but still has a ton of complexity and choices, then you can check out the game uh, Project Hellgate, along with, of course, the base game Human Punishment. But regardless, I wanted to go ahead and show this game off, as well as talk a little bit about the new uh, beginning game, because I think it's really worth your, your time to look at. There's a lot of reviews on there, there's a ton of videos, so I won't go into too much detail, obviously. You can check out all that content, but I will provide a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and take a look at the beginning, as well as their other games. Uh, they have done some really great work, and I'm really excited to see what the final product or completed product of the beginning is. We will be playing it, and I will be making a walkthrough or playthrough video of that, because I'm certain I'm going to like it based on all of the different feedback that I have gotten. All right, outro time. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Project Hellgate, the expansion for Human Punishment. Do go ahead and take a look, like I said before, link in the description, along with, of course, their new game, Human Punishment, the beginning, a larger variant of this game that has a ton of uniqueness to it that I have not seen in a lot of games. You can also go ahead and check out my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's going to be coming out on March 2nd this next month on Kickstarter. It's a puzzle-based game, a little bit abstract, where you're trying to gather shells, taking them from the pool in the middle of the board Board and bringing them onto the rocks and then placing them onto your treasure chest where you're collecting different seashells and different other various sea creatures and whatnot. When well, I'm trying to make combinations based on open and secret objectives, scoring points when the boards are filled to determine who has the most points at the end of the game, being the most colorful and vivid and, and intelligent mermaid out there. A really cute game. I think you'll enjoy it. You can also go ahead and check out our Discord, our Patreon. Thank you, Patreon members. We appreciate it. We're doing new content every day or every week, I should say, on Unfiltered Gamer. Com. We do reviews, board game um, playthroughs, and all kinds of good stuff. And of course, our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. Hopefully, we're going to be you know, pulling that out into Twitch and also to YouTube here, where you can see us play games just like this one every week. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to subscribing to the channel right now with a button next time.